weekend, and uh, we have a snowy morning, and we're going to start with a song called All Bow Down, teaching our, teaching our bass player. You're arriving with the sound of thunder and rain. You're arriving in the call of the wind and the waves. You're arriving in the glow of a burning flame, burning flame. Praise awaits you at the dawn when the world comes alive. Praise awaits you in the darkness, it shines in the light. Praise awaits you with a song of love and desire, love and desire. Here comes a king. All bow down, lift up your voices unto the Lamb. He is the King. All bow down, all bow down. You are coming again, like a thief in the night. You are coming again, the shout from the sky. You are coming again, to take away your pride. Take away your pride. Here comes a king. All bow down. Lift up your voices unto the Lamb. He is the king. All bow down. All bow down. Did we hear the bells? <laughs> I know I didn't either. All right. Well, welcome to worship this morning here at Westby Coon Prairie Lutheran Church. It is wonderful to have you all here with us this morning as we begin celebrating Advent and waiting for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. It's a big day. We have our Bibles going out today. We begin Advent. There's lots of moving parts, uh, so bear with me, um, and hopefully I don't forget something. Um, as we step in to this series, this Advent, called How Does a Weary World Rejoice? Um, this theme that we're working with this year is um, acknowledging the weariness, the grief, the rage, maybe, that some of us all carry, but also affirming that we were made for joy. The theme comes from um, a line in the song, O Holy Night, and from the po this poem written by the Reverend Sarah R. Speed, called The Last Time I Saw God. The last time I saw God face to face, I was looking at a bed of tulips. God was every color of red. I was merely immortal and all in awe of it all. The time before that, we were tying back the curtains looking for stars. God was the deepest purple and the brightest light. The time before that, the city was soft with snow. God was the quiet that sucked us all in. And in between that, these small gifts, there were newborn babies. 
and sapling trees, homemade bread, the sound of church singing on Sunday. Why, yes, we are lucky. We are more than lucky for the moments when delight and awe unzip the weight we carry around us. Today we have a theme. Each week we'll have a we statement that is our theme. And so this week our theme is we acknowledge our weariness. So we acknowledge our weariness in this world that we carry together by looking today at the story of Zechariah and Elizabeth. We do have a few prayer, uh, one prayer request that I want to bring to you this morning, um, and that is for the family of Lenore Widener and Mark Jacobson, who lost their brother, Paul Jacobson, um, over the weekend. And so we pray for you. We pray that God's abiding presence be with you, um, that Paul know the peace that comes with Christ and knowing Christ and seeing Christ face-to-face -face this season. There are pew pads in your um, pews. They're red. If you'd fill those out and place those sheets in the offering pad, or in the offering um, plate later in the service, um, we would love that. We'd love to know that you are here today. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able as we begin with a call to worship. In God's house, we can be joyful, we can be grateful, we can be hopeful. In God's house, we can be weary, we can be anxious, we can be greedy. In God's house, we can be honest, inspired or tired, delighted or doubtful, connected or curious, and everything in between. This is God's house. You are welcome exactly as you are. Let us worship our loving God. We begin by lighting our first Advent candle this morning. How does a weary world hope? By telling stories of hope, by lighting candles in the night, and planting seeds in the winter that will bloom in the spring by praying for children as they grow and picking up trash on the sidewalk, by insisting that small acts can make a difference. There are a million ways to practice hope. So today, we light the candle of hope as a reminder and a charge. With God's help, may we bring hope into a weary world. Amen. We continue with our confession and forgiveness. Friends, in today's scripture passage, a man named Zechariah is given good news from God, and his response is to ask, how can this be? Have any of you ever felt that way when receiving good news? It can be hard to receive good news when we don't expect it. It can be hard to accept God's grace and God's love when we think we don't deserve it. But friends... Scripture tells us over and over again of a loving, generous, and gracious God. So may we come to the prayer of confession today not with fear, but with an awe so deep that we ask ourselves, how can this be? Let us pray. Gracious God, we are weary. For weary bodies that ache and cry out, we pray. Forgive us for pushing ourselves too hard. Remind us that we deserve Sabbath rest. For weary minds that feel overwhelmed and saturated with news, we pray. Forgive us for creating so many distractions. Remind us that in the quiet, we can hear you. For weary hearts that long to feel the joy of this season, we pray. Forgive us for being impatient with ourselves and others. Remind us that healing takes time and that joy and grief can coexist. For the weary edges of our faith that struggle to hold on to hope, we pray. Forgive us. Remind us of Zachariah and Elizabeth. 
Remind us that your good news knows no bounds. Amen. Family of faith, no matter how many times we wear ourselves thin, no matter how many times we lose ourselves to distractions, no matter how many times we ask ourselves, how can this be, God keeps showing up for us. So say this with me. We are loved, we are claimed, we are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Amen. We join in our gathering hymn, Make Room, O Little Town of Bethlehem. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Loving God, the source of our joy, as we turn our hearts toward your word, we ask that you would soften us, soften the calluses on our hearts, weave yourself in between the cracks in our spirits, and plant hope where there is room. And as you do this, like flowers toward the sun, we will turn ourselves toward you, eager to hear a word so good that we cannot help but ask ourselves, how can this be? With openness and gratitude we pray. Amen. You may be seated as we hear God's word. Our first reading is from Psalm, chapter, or Psalm 80, uh, starts with verse 1, and let's read this responsibly. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. Hear, O shepherd of Israel, leading Joseph like a flock, shine forth, you that are enthroned upon the cherubim. In the presence of Ephraim, Benjamin, Benjamin and Asa, stir up your strength and come to help us. Restore us, O God, let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. O Lord, our hosts, how long will your anger be when your people pray? You have fed them with the bread of tears. You have given them bowls of tears to drink. Then we 
Restore us, O God of hosts. Let your face shine upon us, and we shall be saved. And so we will never turn away from you. Give us life, that we may call upon your name. Restore us, O Lord. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite the children to come up for the children's message. Storyteller, yes, he was a storytelling kind. He painted pictures in their mind. It was the way he helped them see how things are really supposed to be. Hello, yay! How are you? Good morning. It's so good to see you all. Happy Advent. Can you tell that something different is going on in church? Yeah, how? How can you tell? There's Christmas trees, right? We're getting ready. What are we getting ready for? Christmas? What happens at Christmas? Presents. Presents, yeah. <laughs> what else happens? Jesus is born. It is Jesus' birthday at Christmas, isn't it? So we are getting ready. We are preparing for Jesus' birthday. Do you guys prepare for your birthday? How do you prepare? What do you do? You get a party. You're getting ready. What do you do to get ready for a party? You get decorations, right? So we're getting ready, right? We're decorating. We're getting ready for Jesus' birthday. What else do you do? Yeah. You make a cake. Okay, so we'll have to maybe do that, right? Well, I might have to get some cake. Maybe we can have cake at Friends in Faith, huh? All right. What else? What else do you think we, what else do you do? What else do you do when it's your birthday? Do you sing? You sing a song when it's your birthday? We have lots of special songs that we sing for the happy birthday song, yes, and we have lots of special songs that we pull out when it's Jesus' birthday, don't we? We get to sing them all, and we love those songs during this time of year. Do you have a favorite Christmas song? Do you? Jingle Bells? You like all of them. I know I do, too. They're so fun. That's why we have to start four weeks before Jesus' birthday, because there's so many good ones, right? All right. Well, today, we're going to hear a story about Zechariah and Elizabeth. And Zechariah and Elizabeth are kind of Jesus' they're Jesus' aunt and uncle, or great aunt and uncle, and they wanted to have a baby, and they couldn't. They wanted to have a baby for a really long time, and they weren't able to, and now they're in our story today, they're pretty old. Um, and an angel comes to Zechariah and tells Zechariah, don't worry, right? I know you're old, I know you're tired, but your wife is going to have a baby. And Zechariah says, how can that be? How can that be? She's old, I'm old. It just isn't possible. And the angel says, trust me, right? It is. I promise it's possible. And so today... We're going to talk about how sometimes when we're really tired, right, or really sad, or really angry, or when we're, we're just too weary, right, good things still can happen. Promises from God still can happen. In our world, bad things sometimes happen, right? But in the midst of that world, Jesus is still born. And that brings us all good, great, beautiful things. And so today we practice hope, and we light that candle of hope, and we celebrate that in the midst of grief and sadness and our tiredness, Jesus comes into this world, and we celebrate that, and we prepare for that. And so that's what we're doing today as we begin, and there are four weeks of that, so we'll do this for four weeks. As you leave today, there is an Advent calendar just for you guys on the table as you go, so you can color in a piece of our logo, our symbol, every day. And our symbol, if you look at it, is two hands. Maybe, Kelsey, could you put that symbol up for us, maybe that theme slide? 
The symbol is two people. See that symbol right there of two people? Yeah, it's two people, and they're holding hands around a globe, around the world is in between them. And the one has those blue lines to symbolize that that person's kind of tired. And the other has those yellow lines. What do you think that symbolizes? Happy. Happiness, yeah. The other person it symbolizes that we're happy, right? So you can be both, right? We can be tired and we can be happy at the same time. And so you're going to color in a part of that logo every day as we count down to Jesus' birth. All right? So I want you to make sure you grab an Advent calendar as you leave today. There's also a children's bulletin every week for you to help you color in the pictures that we're doing. Can you pray with me? Let us pray. Dear Jesus, dear Jesus, we thank you for coming into our weary world. We thank you for coming into our weary world. Help us to remember, help us to remember that there is always hope. That there is always hope. Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming up today, you guys. Have a good one, all right? You may go back to your seats. Thanks for me. All right. I invite the congregation to please stand for our gospel acclamation. All the world awaits the promise of his birth. Open up the gates, heaven comes to earth. Host of angels sing, our Savior here to dwell. The King of every King, our Emmanuel, Hosanna. gospel today comes from the gospel of Luke, starting with chapter 1, verse 1. Luke writes, Since many have undertaken to compile a narrative about the events that have been fulfilled among us, just as they were handed on to us by those who from the beginning were eyewitnesses and servants of the, Lord, of the word, I too decided as one having a grasp of everything from the start to write a well-ordered account for you, most excellent Theophilus, so that you may have a firm grasp of the words in which you have been instructed. In the days of King Herod of Judea, there was a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. His wife was descended from the daughters of Aaron, and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to all the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once, when he was serving as priest before God during his section's term of duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood to enter the sanctuary of the Lord to offer incense. Now at the time of the incense burning, the whole assembly of people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear you a son and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him 
to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How can I know that this will happen? For I am an old man and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until the day these things occur. Meanwhile, the people were waiting for Zechariah and wondering at his delay in the sanctuary. When he did come out, he was unable to speak to them, and they realized that he had seen a vision in the sanctuary. He kept motioning to them and remained unable to speak. When his time of service was ended, he returned to his home. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our creator, Jesus, for whom we wait this Advent season, and the Holy Spirit who consoles our weary hearts. This is Advent, the time of waiting before the coming of Jesus. It's emotionally charged, and when we feel, it's a time when we feel many things deeply and sometimes all at once. Advent is a time actually of tension. We sing songs of peace while wars rage in the Middle East and around the world. We are expected to entertain in our homes when bank accounts feel stretched. We are united with family, which can often be so complicated. We fill our days with music and concerts, decorations, and special events, while at the same time feeling exhausted. We sing songs of joy to the world, while grief from losses of this year still weigh heavy on our hearts. If we ever needed to understand how two things that seem to be opposite exist simultaneously, Advent opens the space to fully experience this. And our theme this year, How Does a Weary World Rejoice, does just that. Each week, through scripture and story, promise and song, blessings and prayers, our worship we'll look at a different we statement that will create space for acknowledging our weariness while celebrating God's closeness with great joy. So our theme, like I said, comes from the hymn, O Holy Night, and the line, A thrill of hope the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. That hymn has its own interesting historical tension. The song was originally written by a French poet who was actually an atheist, did not believe in God. And the music was supplied then by a Jewish composer. The hymn was later translated into English by an American Unitarian minister and became a popular hymn for Christian abolitionists due to its kind of justice-focused language. This hymn reminded those people trying to end slavery that justice and joy could coexist together at the same time. Our weariness and our rejoicing can coexist together. So as we move through this series, I invite you to consider What brings you joy in the midst of your weariness? Because I think joy is also different than happiness. And then I want you to also ask, why do we sometimes 
resist joy. And I'm operating on a few assumptions as we go through this sermon series. Because of Jesus, I believe a few things. That joy is always rooted in the knowledge that we belong to God. That you deserve to feel joy. That it is okay to feel joy alongside other emotions like grief and fear. And that the world needs your joy. That the world is better when your joy is shared. For this first week in Advent, our we statement is that we acknowledge our weariness. We acknowledge our weariness together. And today we hear that story of an angel who greets Zechariah. So just a little family tree. Elizabeth and Zechariah are very devoted people to God. But they're advanced in age and they have not had children and they are grieved by this. This is something they have longed for. And then into that grief comes this angel. And this angel says, your prayers have been heard, right? Your wife, Elizabeth, will bear a son and you will name him John. And then the angel says, and John, your son will make ready a people prepared for the Lord. You will have a son, Zechariah. His name will be John, and he is going to prepare the Lord for the Messiah. Now, Zechariah and Elizabeth, they knew the prophets. They knew that Isaiah had promised that God would come and redeem his people. And now Zechariah has learned that it would be his child who would prepare the people for God himself. And he says, how, am I, how will I know How will I know this was so? How can I trust this promise? Zechariah has every single reason to believe that this promise is impossible. How can we be so old yet have a child? How can we, humble believers, have such an important job as to usher in God himself? How can an angel of joy enter into Zechariah's weariness with such a joyful promise? And how can he and Elizabeth be expected to hope and believe after life has dealt them so many disappointments? And that is Advent. God entering into our weariness with a promise that seems too good to be true, but so good that it has to be true. It has to be true. In Advent, we feel our hearts stir with hope that is both scary and empowering, peaceful and restless. In Advent, we are truthful about our weariness and our fears, and God says, I see you. I see you I see all of you, and I promise that I will enter into your grief, your anxiety, your fear, your weariness, and I will shine a light and life for you. And that light and that life will be Jesus. This is the promise of God, and there is nothing we have done or could do that will keep God from coming to us in the grace and love of Jesus Christ. How could this be? It is because of who our God is. How will I know that this is so? Because God has shown us again and again that God shows up in the love of community, in the holiness of worship, in the holy communion and the forgiveness of sins, in the moments of kindness at Christmas, in the Christmas lights that shine in a dark evening. And as we hand out this book, we know it is filled with stories over and over of God showing up and being true to God's promises. We can know that this is so because this is what 
God promises us. Each week, my sermon will close with a prayer that the Reverend Sarah R. Speed has written that supports our theme. And I said there are devotionals and Advent calendars in the back. They are for you to pick up. We ask that you take one per household. The poems that I, the poem I'll read today is included in that devotional, along with a devotion for each day. There's also, like I said, children's bulletins and a children's Advent calendar. There'll be a Facebook post every day starting on December 1st. It is my hope that through this Advent season, you will be able to find hope in the midst of your weariness. If not, replace your weariness with the hope and the promise and the love that God brings at Christmas. So here's our poem. Our poem is titled, Wade In. Over time, wind and water will sand down the edges of a stone. For humans, our wind and water is the grief of the world. Stay here long enough and pieces of you will be pressed upon by life's never-ending stream. It's enough to make you weary. It's enough to make you question. It's enough to make you quiet. And yet the stream continues. So do not be afraid to stand in that water, to wade in, soak the hem of your jeans, drip wet footprints through every room in your house, let the water stains tell your story. And over and over again, And when your body grows weary of swimming, name the stream. Acknowledge your weariness. For eventually you will pick flowers from the opposite bank. And over and over again, we'll tell this story. And over and over again, a weary world will rejoice. Thanks be to God. We join in singing our hymn, our sermon hymn, A Weary World to the Tune of Silent Night.
now we're going to present Bibles to our three-year-olds, our third graders, and our seventh grade confirmation students. So I want to invite the following students forward and their parents to receive the Bibles. When you come forward, I will place the Bible in their parents' hands, and I ask that the parents continue to hold on to that Bible until we ask you to place it in, the, in your child's hands. So we're going to start with the three-year-olds. So I have Brinley Dinger, Judson Fortune, Cameron Fremstead, Ladies out. Roxy, would you mind coming up and helping me? <laughs> Thank you. Here we go. Yes. I want to. Thank you, Rox. Yes. Thank you. Perfect. That's, yeah. That's. There you go. Riker Huff. He's coming. Everly Mischowski. Maverick Murphy. Kira Strand. Lena Swigum. And Callan Tobin. All right. Okay. Those are our three-year-olds. Now I'm going to our third graders. Brinley Berger. Oliver Lehman. Alaska Martini. Kendall Muhlins. Kennedy Mosier, Parker Peterson, Paisley Robson, Rhett Stuber, and Matthew Webb. All right. I'll just have you, yep, you guys can come over here too. I don't bite, I promise. <laughs> Usually. Um, and now our seventh grade confirmation students. So Cooper Fensel, Breck Fleming, Bailey Fry, Ty Halverson, Ella Ottinger, Kinley Torkelson, Ariana Trot, Eli Tuzinski. Sorry. And Ayla Wong. We got Eli, Kinley. Here we are. Ariana. We got her. And Ella. 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 There we go. Yeah, did everybody get the Bible and the right name tag? That's always important. Okay. You can place that name tag in the front of your Bible. So parents, we place the Bibles in your hands because in Christian love, you presented your children to God in holy baptism. And baptism, sacred promises are made. As parents of these children, it is your calling to keep the following sacred promises, to faithfully bring them to the services of God's house, to teach them the Lord's Prayer, the Creed, and the Ten Commandments, to place in their hands the Holy Scriptures, and to provide for their instruction in the Christian faith. Parents, do you renew your commitment to these baptismal promises? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. Parents, one of the ways we help you keep the promises of baptism is to place in your hands the Holy Scriptures to give your child a Bible to be used throughout the years in study, devotion, and family prayer. This is an important step, and we celebrate with you today this important milestone in your child's formation. 
At this time, we ask you to place this Bible into your child's hands and say these words, Today I fulfill the promise. Let us pray for them. You can join me in this prayer. Heavenly Father, on this important day, the day that these, your children, receive a Bible of their own, we ask your blessing on their parents that they may fulfill the vows that they have made to you concerning their children. And we ask your blessing upon each child that they may diligently study your word and gladly learn and hear it so that they may learn to trust God, proclaim Christ through word and deed, care for others and the world God made, and work for justice and peace among all people. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. I want to thank the congregation for making the gift of these Bibles possible to these children. So thank you and congratulations. All right, confirmation students, you, I want to see those at confirmation next time. December 19th. All right, you may be seated. Thank you for coming today. I invite you to stand as we join in a confession of faith. Our confessions of faith for this sermon series will be written specifically for this series, so please join me as we confess. We believe in a God who hears our prayers, who knows the shape and form of our weariness. We believe in a God who wants joy and delight for us, not just survival and existence. We believe in a God who looks ahead, who is not done dreaming for the world, a God who sends hope in the form of people and change, movements and spirit. And so we return to this space. We bring our joy and our weariness like two sides of the same coin, and we trust that God is already at work. Yes, we believe in a God who hears our prayers. Thanks be to God for a love like that. Amen. Gracious God, you carry us through our days. You know every word on our tongue, every hair on our head. You know the dreams in our hearts and the weight of our bones. You also know the weariness we bring with us into the morning and into this space. So with honesty, we come before you both with hearts full of gratitude and with prayer requests on our lips. First, holy God, we thank you for the gifts of this life that give energy, for birthday candles and sunrises, for handwritten cards and jobs that we are passionate about, for stories that can make us laugh until we cry, and for family and friends that feel like family. Hear us as we pray. What a gift you give us. In addition to these prayers of gratitude, loving God, we also bring the things that are heavy on our hearts. For gun violence, homelessness, hunger, the destruction of your creation, and war, we ask your attention. For family and friends in chemotherapy, and for all in seasons of transition and grief that won't let go, especially those on our prayer list and those we name in our hearts right now, We pray especially for the family of Paul Jacobson. We ask for your love and care for all people. Take this yoke from us, relieve some of the burden on our backs, and wrap our arms around places where we feel most tender. Hear us as we pray. What a gift you give us. And as we enter into this new Advent season, a season marked with joy, hope, and light, we ask that you would remind us that our full humanity is welcome here. Remind us that there is room for both joy and grief. There is room for our weariness and awe. There is room for our faith and doubt, for nothing is too big or too far gone from your love to reach it. With hope in our hearts, we lift these and all our unspoken prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, 
our Lord and Savior. Amen. We now worship God by sharing what God has first given us as we receive this morning's offering. You may be seated. Invite all the kids to come forward to help with a noisy offering. How could I forget that? Wonderful. Please come and help. Stand as you are able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. And so we remember in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered together, by the Holy Spirit, into the body of Christ, let us pray the prayer that our Lord taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. May this meal, given by God for all the people of God, fill your mind, your body, and your soul. May it bring you peace that only Christ can bring. And know that all are welcome at the Lord's table. You may be seated. As you come forward for communion today, we have both wine and grape juice. We have wafers and gluten-free wafers. The signal to your server that you would like um, grape juice or gluten-free is just a thumbs up, and your server will know. As you come forward, you'll be handed the elements, and then there are two bowls on the side for you to place your glasses in as you go back to your seats um, down the side aisle. Come, taste and see that our Lord is indeed good. The meal is ready.
receive this blessing. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen each of you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. We have a couple of announcements today that I like to share with you. Um, we continue our um, Monday Bible study at the Daily Brew, um, watching the video series, The Chosen. Uh, we start, uh, ask people to come at 11.30 to order lunch if you're going to order, and then we start at noon. Um, and that really has been life-giving and quite fun because it's people from all different congregations. Right, Sharon? Um, Pat and Faye have been coming. There's a bunch of people who have been coming, so thank you for doing that. The giving tree is set up downstairs with gift tags, so pick up a couple as you go. Um, gifts need to be wrapped and returned by December 14th. Um, be sure to place the tag on the outside of your gift. That is helpful, not on the inside. <coughs> Tricky. Tricky, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we are looking for someone who would like to share special music um, with us at Country Coon Prairie Christmas Eve worship on 3 p.m., um, I think it would be really special if we had a member of our congregation doing that. So if anybody would like to do that, please let me know. On Tuesday, we have a flu vaccine and COVID vaccine clinic here at church in the Mickelson room. Uh, no reservation required. Just bring your insurance card. Um, but nobody will be turned away. So please come on over. And um, if you have been waiting for a vaccine, you can come and get it here. That is from 1 to 3 p.m. on Tuesday. The, uh, we are cleaning the kitchen tomorrow. What time? Nine. Nine. Something. Nine o'clock in the morning. So if anybody would like to come and help do the, a deep clean of the kitchen, many hands make little work. And... I know we have a very special birthday today. She tells me she's 87. I'm just going to believe her because <laughs> she's embarrassed. Ella Lind. It is Ella's birthday today. So happy birthday, Ella. <laughs> Do we have any other birthdays today? All right. Well, we celebrate with you. We thank you for joining us on your special day, and we send you our love. With that, I invite you to stand as you are able in body or in spirit for our benediction. Family of faith, as you leave this place, you go into a weary, a weary world, so speak tenderly. Do the good that is yours to do. Choose connection. Hold on to hope. And remember that Christ took on flesh for you. You are God's beloved. So go rejoicing. The world needs it. Amen. We join in singing our sending him Hearts Waiting to the tune of Joy to the World. Hearts waiting, waiting on the Savior.
Messiah, ruler of the nations. God is for us, come, oh come, Emmanuel. The doors of heaven open wide, can you hear the song inside? Joy to the world, joy to the world, the Lord has come, the Lord or a thank you. Um, I want to thank the Altar Guild for the amazing, for decorating and, and turning this space into um, Christmas for us. It's beautiful. Uh, thank you to Rick Fredrickson and his boys for decorating our Christmas trees. And thank you to our anonymous donor for donating our two new Christmas trees um, up here. It is truly um, a family that does this and puts this space together. And I hope that you felt joy today. So go in peace. Christ is our hope. Thanks be to God. And remember that we are sent into this weary world to serve God, sharing the love of Jesus Christ.